Do you require a long, elegant petticoat with as many tears as a wedding cake? Maybe it's to wear on top of a crinoline to smooth out the hoops. Or maybe you want to wear it on its own for a sleeker look. Whatever your reason, this tutorial will walk you through how to make a long tiered petticoat. What you'll need, a crinoline. You can see how I made this one in another tutorial. I will link it below and in the cards. Fabric, I'm using a polycotton here, but anything non-stretch would be fine. I required 11 meters for this project. Matching thread, a pattern with an A-line skirt. The one I'm using is Butterick 4131. Otherwise, feel free to draft one yourself. Pins, fabric scissors, tailor's chalk, tape measure, ruler, bias binding, tool tape, a trouser hook and bar, sewing machine, and optional lace to finish off the tiered edges to make it fancy pants. Let's begin. Start with your crinoline on a dress form and pin the A-line skirt pattern over the top. Measure out how long you would like the base of the petticoat to be. Keep in mind that the top of the bottom tier will start from the bottom of the skirt. In my case, it worked out to be about 74 centimeters or 29 inches for those using the Imperial system. I also worked out roughly here that my tiers would be about 20 centimeters wide, which would allow for five tiers. I also noted that the pattern did not go fully over the crinoline, so I marked the widest point, and will add 3 centimeters to each side of the pattern at that point, which I did in this next step. I extended out the side at that point, and then continued the straight line down, then made sure that from the waist it was 74 centimeters all around. Then I pinned the front pieces together, which consisted of a center panel and two side panels, and then did the same for the back. I then sewed these panels together with French seams. When it came to sew up the sides, I left one of the sides open about 17 centimeters from the waist to allow me to get it on and off. Next is the bottom hem. I kept it simple. One centimeter fold up, then turn that over on itself and sew that down too, to keep the raw edge enclosed. As a bit of a side note, I hemmed this so it was on the outside of the dress since the bottom ruffle was going to cover it anyway. I also turned and sewed the waist down twice with a half centimeter allowance. Onto that open side seam. I went around this with bias binding. It was just a matter of pinning, sewing the outer layer by machine, then pinning the other side in place, and then stitching that side down by hand. Now onto the waistband. My waistband is being made out of this twill tape, but any firm non-stretch tape or ribbon would suffice. Other examples I had on hand was this Petersham ribbon and this gross grain ribbon. But you could even make the waistband using your petticoat material with some interfacing if you prefer. Cut enough of your waistband to go around your waist securely, plus a little extra to fold over the edges. Pin and then sew. Finally, it's just a matter of sewing on your closure. I'm using a trousers hook and bar closure, but a button or regular hook and eyes, or even a few secure press studs would do the trick too. Or if you really wanted to, you could make this closure into a drawstring. Really, whatever you prefer. Then your petticoat base is complete. Next, we need to work out the ruffle tier lengths and placements. As I mentioned before, I knew that each tier would be about 20 centimeters wide. To allow for a small overlap with each of the tiers, I figured that increments of 17 centimeters would provide the best outcome. With my chalk, I marked out these measurements onto the outside of the skirt, then connected those marks up to make lines to mark the placement of the ruffles. Now it's time for some petticoat maths. I laid the petticoat flat and using my measuring tape, I measured out where each of the layers would be sewn and recorded it. For each of these measurements, I multiplied it by two to get the full petticoat circumference. Then, as I personally like a three to one ratio for ruffles, I multiplied it by three to get each of the lengths that I required. Now grab your ruler, because it's time to draw out lots of straight lines. For each of the lengths of the ruffles, I cut out a 20 centimeter strip. This would allow for the pieces to be seamed, the lace to be added on, and then each piece sewn onto the base. Just as a side note, it is important to label each of the pieces as you go because they can get confused quite easily. 
Then I did a rolled hem on all the long sides, except the bottom two layers. That is because one of the long sides was actually the selvaged edge and was already self finished. I did this mostly to save time. I also took this opportunity to do a rolled hem on the short edges of the top tier, as this will not be sewn shut like the other tiers as it will need to open at the bias binding. Then I gave each strip a good iron. Now onto the tedious but rewarding optional step, adding the lace, or ribbon if you would prefer. It's really straightforward. Simply pin the lace onto the bottom edge of the fabric and sew. That's simple, but it will feel like an eternity. Mine was about 28 meters of pinning and sewing. So word of the wise, chuck on some good tunes or a good show to listen to. For all but the top tier, sew the lengths together with French seams so that they form loops. Okay, time to add the ruffle goodness. The technique I will be using is the lazy lady method or gathering as you go. You can of course use other gathering methods, which I did a whole tutorial about and will also link that below. It starts off with marking the petticoat with a starting point, then finding the halfway point and then the quarter points, then into eighths. And for the bottom tier, I actually went into the sixteenths. And then I did the same for the ruffle strip. Finally, it's just a matter of matching up the pins on the two pieces. Still confused? Let me explain this with a diagram that I did up for my long simple petticoat tutorial. Think of the petticoat base as a circle. You have your starting point. From that point you can find the halfway point. From there you can find the quarter points. And then you can mark up the points into 8 and then into 16, all by halving the previous lengths. Then you do the same for the ruffle layer, pinning the same amount of points in. So even though there is a wider gap, you have the same ratio going around. The next stage is just to match up the pins. I hope that that may have made it a bit easier to understand. Once you've completed your pinning, it is onto sewing, gathering down the ruffles as you sew. I would also like to point out that I'm sewing all these ruffles onto the outer layer of fabric, right sides facing each other with the ruffle going up towards the waist. This is because when it's worn, the ruffle will fold over that stitch line, hiding it, and it will also add a little bit more body to the ruffle. I'm not going to lie, it takes some time, but your petticoat will grow in volume as you add the layers, and it is a magnificent sight to behold. And if you ever feel like you're drowning in ruffles, or you can't see your machine, you're doing it right. And then there you have it your guide to creating the flounce and the elegance of any lady who wishes to grace the ballroom with a long tiered petticoat, especially if it's edged with lace or ribbon. I hope that you found this tutorial useful and a bit helpful for your next costume. If you've got any questions, feel free to fire them in the comments section below. Otherwise, giving me a thumbs up helps me a whole bunch. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.